Loretta always wanted a bead circle, so when she started the Bear Paw Art Gallery, she started a bead circle. And I think they had that store for seven years, and every single Saturday she had that circle. I only got to go to her bead circle for two years, and um, then she closed her store, and she said, you have now inherited the bead circle. I started off just doing the flat beading and doing... And you got um, beads? Bracelets. I'm gonna try these. You know the um, daisy chain bracelets. I guess we all did them when we were kids. And and then I do medallions. But it was all flat beading. The first time I saw the Iroquois style raised beadwork is that years and years ago. I was on the museum board. And the first time I saw that collection of raised beadwork, it was like, oh my God. This is what this is our tradition. It was like I was so shocked that because I had never seen, I'd never been exposed to traditional stuff before. You know, it was lost to us. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, it was almost it was almost lost on this reservation. There were not that many bead artists here anymore. I would work all day, come home, and I would sit down and bead till I went to bed. It's relaxing. Just to relax. Mm -hmm. Now it's become a way of life for me. I mean, I, I can't quit. It's like I'm addicted to it. It's yeah. an, it, it is an addiction, I yeah. think. And it doesn't ma matter how many beads you have. When you, you never see another enough. package, you have to have that package. When I was little, it seems like I always got beads and looms and bead projects for birthday presents and Christmas. Just like other little girls got dolls and buggies and stuff. I just got beads and, you know, different things, wire and thread and needles and material to make things with. It takes a long time to do all that, but then you start sewing it together and then the picture starts coming out. I mean, that is a beautiful hat when you start sewing it together. But all in pieces laying all over the table, it isn't very, I mean, and it take, it's such a long process that when it starts coming together, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe I produced that. Last year, we had one little girl, I think she was in fifth grade, and she came, she didn't have anything. And Laura and I gave her everything. We gave her the material, and then she wanted to make a collar for the Oneida Art Show, and she didn't know if she could get it done. And I said, did you ever hear of applique? I said, let's let's go get some satin. I went, took her upstairs, and I went through all of the satin I have, and she picked out the color she liked. And I gave her pictures of bears and turtles and everything. She picked the turtle out, made an applique out of it, and then she beat it all around the edge. It took her a really long time. She won first place in the children's. I was so impressed with that, I couldn't believe it. And she. When she got her award, she ran across the whole auditorium and hugged me. She smiled the whole way. It's like she zeroed in on me and just came running over and grabbed me. And she said, now I have my own money. You don't have to give me more supplies. I was just flabbergasted. So it's just little things like that. You know, and, and that little three-year-old that comes and shows me her little circles that she makes. I mean, she's going to be good someday. She does good little circles for being only three. I mean, I'm surprised she can even work a needle. So it's it's really fun to watch the little kids. I mean, everybody comes over and they bring potluck and we all talk about recipes and we all exchange patterns and we, we share all of our everything, everything that we have. We trade beads, we trade thread, we give new ideas. If we learn something new, we all share it and it's just... It's just like one big party for four hours. It's just, it's fun. I heard about Rosemary Hill and I made a plan and I brought her to Oneida and she started teaching Oneida's raised bead work. And then one of my friends asked if I wanted to go to New York to learn from Rosemary. So her and I jumped in the car, we went to New York and I sat in Rosemary's house for a week and learned, like Rosemary said, intensive raised bead work. 
that was like awesome. And now she's coming again in about a month. That'll be the third time she's been brought to Oneida. And this time when she comes, she's going to teach us how to teach Iroquois raised beadwork. And she's going to be teaching us all Oneida patterns.